Hi, I'm Lynn Langett for Teaching Kids Programming. In this short video, I'm going to talk to you about using TKP Java Courseware. This is really designed for middle and high school teachers. So you want to get started on our main site, teachingkidsprogramming.org. If you know Java or you have a Java programming background, you can just get our code right here, but we're assuming that most of our teachers don't. So what we've done is we've set up a section for teachers, and if you click that link, this is what you would see. You'd see the courseware. And we have our courseware set up into sections based on the concepts that we're teaching. You can see them here. And uh, in addition to the Java code, we have written uh, lesson plans for you. So we really recommend if you're completely new to teaching coding that you start with the instructional design information so you can understand the concepts behind the courseware design. If you want to dive right in, you can go to the intro to classes, methods, and for loops. And I'll show you what that looks like. If you click that, you'll see for each section we have a written lesson plan, which I'll show you in just a minute, and then we have a sample video that gives you a flavor of the courseware. Now for each course, there's several different lessons or recipes, and so we won't give you eight videos here because we have heard from our teachers that you guys prefer to read, um, and do let us know if you'd like to see more videos because we can make them. Once you would click download lesson plan, then that would take you into our pen flip, which is an online uh, lesson plan. And the reason we used this vehicle is because we found that some of our teachers wanted to just go to a website basically while they're teaching and other teachers wanted to print this out. Um, in addition, you can make your own copy of it if you want to. You can notice there's versions here. So if you uh, want to make your own version and just use this as a starting, you can just uh, do that as well. So if you want to print it out, you can say download and I'll give you the, I'll show you here, I'll give you the formats. Um, I usually use it online. So the way that this is organized is for each course, which has uh, six to eight sections uh, or lessons, uh, we have a little section in the beginning that gives you the common things to set up. Because um, again, our teachers told us that they wanted to be able to prepare to teach the, the course. So, you know, you need to install the courseware, you need to read this lesson plan, you need to code the recipes yourself. We have a PowerPoint I'll show you in a minute with key language concepts. Uh, we have keyboard shortcuts, and then uh, we have a, a printed worksheet if you wish. This is optional because, again, some of you guys told us that you want to have something that the kids can take home or, or work on that's not on a computer. Uh, this part right here, we linked the answers for you as a teacher so that when you're teaching, you can have the answer. Because again, we're realizing that a lot of you guys are new to programming. And so this is something that's really helpful to you when you are teaching uh, programming to your kids. So I'll just click that and I'll show you, like this is the very first recipe and here's the answer. And this is over on GitHub. Now we don't intend the students to have this because of course our courseware is designed to be instructor led. This is really for you as a teacher to be able to have that answer as you're guiding the students line by line, translating the English into the Java code. Um, and in addition to uh, the pen flip, which is about a hundred page book, um, and it is growing, it's an active area of development for us as we get iterative feedback from our teachers on what they need more information about, or you know, we just share tips and, and that kind of stuff. Um, you'll see that this this will be uh, will add to it. Probably won't take away, but we'll add to it. And you can see all the different sections here. In addition to this, we do have our a GitHub repository, and this is where we store our Java code. And just to give you an idea of the amount of lessons that we have for you, we have eight different sections or courses, and they're associated to different topics. And we intend you to start with one. This is just for our own demos, but you can use it if you want. This just allows you to have some quick methods. If you just have five minutes and you want to show another teacher, or maybe somebody else you work with what it looks like. So we created, well, I'll just show you what it looks like. We created a um, quick shape, which allows you to um, use this uh, shape uh, capability. Actually, this isn't the answer, but you would just say tortoise uh, make shape. And then you can pass in um, different kinds of shapes. It kind of simulates the variations, um, which is in the first recipe, first quote a square, and then you say different number of sides, different line thickness. It allows you to do that more quickly for a demonstration. Um, anyway, you'll probably teach more out of this library. And just to give you an idea, each um, section has a number of Java lessons in here. So you can kind of take a look at that. In addition to the GitHub, we have some other resources. And uh, 
I have, for example, up on SlideShare, I have uh, Java language notes, and I use this as anchoring for some of the core language techniques, and some teachers use it and some don't. Just to give you a, a sample of it here. So this, you know, I just put this up when I'm talking about the idea of variables, for example, just so the students kind of stop what they're doing coding and they kind of get this language uh, concept into their brain. So uh, as you uh, may know, and I'll actually show you here, if I go back over here and I go to the first lesson, we currently are uh, teaching the majority of our uh, classes and our, our teachers are teaching on our customized version of Eclipse. And um, our core product is implemented on Eclipse and will always continue to be because some people will want to do an install, some people won't have a browser-based environment. But I just want to share in this video that we are doing some experimentation with a vendor called CodeEnvy, which has a browser-based implementation, and I want to give you a little preview of what it looks like. Now, if you want to be part of our test group, and, and really we are early here, so I know a lot of teachers don't have any time to do anything besides teach their classes, so I'll, I'll give you fair warning that, that this is, um, this is uh, beta and experimental. But on the other hand, some of you are nerds, that's why you've listened to me this long, so if you want to participate here, we've got information on the pen flip on how to set this up. But I'll show you what it looks like. One of the reasons we're doing this is because we hear more and more from our teachers that you don't have time to install, do updates, and uh, sometimes you don't even have the proper hardware. Uh, more and more I hear that teachers are, are working with Chromebooks. So this is a browser-based environment that's designed to um, replace Eclipse or, or NetBeans or whatever you might be using. So uh, the way that it works is uh, we have created a jar file or a, a basically a zip file in some ways of our, our Java, Java source. Um, and that's linked on this, this page over here. So you can create an instance just by clicking a link basically. And you'll have a temporary instance just to play around with. Now um, there's two ways to work with this. The temporary instance is great for just playing around because when you close this browser w window, this is gone, nothing is saved. You don't have to log in, it's free, it's good to play around with. But if you want to work with this on a more ongoing basis, you click the persist button and then you need to set up an account in Code NB. Now they have a pretty big free tier, so you still can play around with it, but they are a commercial service. So if you were to teach this for a class or whatever, you may incur some charges. So you need to read what their what their um, you know fee fee rate is as of the time of your using it. So I recommend when you just get started, you just use a temporary factory, but be aware that, you know, when you're done, it doesn't persist unless you choose to save it. So I'm just gonna show you how it works. And again, it gives you kind of a sense of our coursework. So I translated the first line of English into Java, and now I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Now what's happening here is this is running on um, the cloud. And so uh, it's spinning up um, instances on the cloud um, of a, uh, builder and a runner. And so this is separated from the um, IDE or the coding environment. And when the um, build and run is done, then you're going to see this link down here change into a HTTP link. And there you can see it. And then I'm going to go ahead and click that. And what that's going to do is that's going to show my tortoise. Now this is, uh, you know, in a browser and it's simulating a Java um, on-prem. So if you go ahead and click close this window and close this and then stop this runner, then that resource is destroyed. Now again, this is an early, you know, a beta of this and we realize this is a little bit um, much maybe for, you know, kids to do. So we're hoping to abstract this just to back to a run button when we release it commercially. But we thought you might be interested. So once you're done with this, then you, you shut this off and then clear it out and then you can code your next line. So it does support keyboard shortcuts. So you know the TKP Java method of coding is once you've got it translated, then you just do a command or a control D to get rid of the English because you no longer need it. And then you go to the next line here and I'm gonna go shift enter and I'm gonna say TOR control space. We do have IntelliSense and then M for move and control space. And then we can put in 50 for the length in pixels. And we have some other great um, capabilities in here too. We do have outlining, so if you had long code, and we really don't in here, but if you use this for more projects, you can you know, skip to a certain point. Um, we also have the ability to um, go into the uh, Java docs. And in TKP Java, we've put a whole bunch of um, information in the Java docs. We've tried to make it kid friendly because we're trying to encourage the best practice of kids you know, reading the documentation. So this is for the, the um, the nouns or the or the or the objects, and then for the for the verbs or the methods, we have examples, 
And you'll see when you read the um, pen flip and when you're teaching that we uh, you know, encourage you to lead the students to uh, look at the Java doc. You know, we spent a lot of time with this so that um, the kids get good programming uh, habits. And then we do encourage you to run it after each uh, translation. So then you go ahead and run it. And um, this is a little bit different than on-prem. You know, on-prem sometimes can be faster uh, in terms of spinning up the, um, the, you know, the build and run. You know, you see the Java window. But um, we're finding in our testing that this is a great time to explain to kids, you know, what they did. So if you're teaching it this way, you can say, you know, uh, you know, how would he move backwards? You know, that kind of stuff. And it's minus 50. And then you can go ahead and click this. And then you can see it moved. And then you can close it here and close it here and stop it. So um, we also have some utilities for you as teachers because, you know, we know, especially public teachers, you've got these huge um, number of students in your class. So we have this utility that's called a virtual proctor. And what this allows you to do, and you can see there's the run I just did, is it allows you to um, see the status of your student pairs. So we recommend that you have this up because we have mastery-based learning and we want uh, and intend um, all the students in the class to master the concept before they get to the next one. And that's why we have so many different types of lessons and courses, uh, I'm sorry, lessons in each course so that they get practice over and over. So a couple things on this, um, you can filter by classroom um, and by default it's uh, world. And the way that you do that, if you're interested, is you go back over here and, and this is in the pen flip um, and you go virtual proctor and R there, so virtual proctor, and then you say set class name, and then you put that in, uh, you designate that as a string, so I'll say where I am today, so, um, and then you can have the students, uh, as I like to say, sign their work, and they really seem to like that, uh, so that's kind of a fun thing to do um, once they, you know, finish coding a recipe or whatever. You do have to put this in each recipe. Uh, we haven't put this globally yet, and we'd really like to have your feedback in terms of, would you like the ability to put this, um, the virtual pro proctor settings at a global level? Um, and then I'll go ahead and say this, and then I'll make a change here, and uh, I'm gonna go get rid of this line, and then I'm gonna turn the tortoise, and say turn, and to the right, and go here and say 90 and then I'm going to go ahead and check my runner and it is stopped and get rid of it and then I'm going to go back over here and run this and then as this is running now it's going to you know run and of course in the virtual proctor you're going to see the settings and I'll show you how that works. Um, the virtual proctor works with Eclipse too. So if you're using the Eclipse version of our course where you can, um, you can have the kids sign their work, which is just a really fun capability. And it's almost coming up here. And here it is. And you do have to close this corner and then the browser because you're close. We hook into the on close event of the window and then stop. And then over here should come up in just a minute. Oh, I had it filtered, so it was already there. So I can say home, and there you can see, like you could set your class, which is kind of fun. So anyway, um, I hope that you find this uh, video to be useful, and uh, we love to hear from you. So the easiest way to get a hold of us is to click this little mail button down here, and then you can talk to us. But we love to hear from our teachers, and we are working super hard to build usable courseware so that you can have a great time and introduce computational thinking to your middle and high school classrooms. Again, this is Lynn Langett for Teaching Kids Programming. Happy programming and have a great day.